So here's just a quick overview of our module two application activity where we will be doing an evaluation or IEP checklist. So why checklists? Why are we having you do a checklist? Well, for one, it's a recommended best practice. DPI has put the SLI criteria into checklist form and recommends that we complete this with each of our evaluations. Now, it's not the most usable form, so we just simply copied and pasted it into a Microsoft form uh, so that you can enter it in a computer, copy and paste things, and save a copy for yourself. Uh, so I know it seems like a lot, and this may just seem like we're doing more paperwork, but we really do feel that it's important for you and your practice. Also, this is your application activity for this module. We're not asking you to do anything else, so hopefully uh, it should fit into the expected workload. So we also feel that checklists can be really valuable. There was a great book that came out several years ago talking about how checklists can really help improve practices. Uh, the fun example they gave is that the Cheesecake Factory has this extensive menu and they make their food generally pretty consistently good. How do they do it? They argue they do it through checklists. Also, it can help with very complex procedures like surgeries. Uh, so you know, having that process to ensure that we are having good fidelity to a best practice can help us with our own practices. Uh, we also plan on using this for continuous improvement. We wanna see where you're at. This is the data that we're gonna use uh, within our plan, do, study, act procedure so that we can develop supports, help the district identify supports uh, to let you do what you do best and that serve your students. Now, what are some things we expect to get? How do we expect this to be beneficial? For one, I think we'll find some insights for your administr administrators. One thing I was surprised about when I started this project is it, no one really knows what people are doing. Not to say they need to you know, know what everyone's doing, but you know, it, it's, it's kind of anecdotal and we don't have great information on the types of tests that people are giving, uh, the types of approach that people are taking, what's the consistency across the district. So not as a judgmental way of evaluating what people are doing, but just understanding where the district is and, and how they can support you. I also think it be, can be really powerful for you when we get a summary of what everyone's doing and we share that, you can see what each other are doing. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what Tom down the, you know, down the hall is doing, but in general, what are SLPs in your district doing? That can be very insightful. And then also it can help us have some good insights that we can share more broadly through our research aims, if you agreed to participate in the research. Just as a reminder, this first year, we are gonna keep everything confidential. We are collecting everything. We don't share names with anyone. Moving forward, uh, we will transition into district practices. So starting next year, we'll transition into more having your district do these types of things. Again, we will ensure that anything that is done like this will be done for uh, improving and supporting your practices, not for educator effectiveness or judging or making any type of evaluation on an individual practice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna complete a checklist. I'm gonna show you that in a bit and you're gonna be ready to discuss it at our next community of practice. So this is what the checklist will look like when you click on the link. One thing to note is that we're asking you to remove any identifying information from your students. I wanna stress that this project and this activity as well as all activities have been approved by your school district and every district participating in this project. In addition, we have approval from UWM's Institutional Review Board. So on this first page, we just wanna get uh, your information and then you can tell us the type of evaluation you completed. Now we're going to get to three pages asking you about language, articulation, and phonology. So this first language page, uh, we ask if you had any concerns in the area of language. Um, if you didn't have concerns, you say agree. If you did have concerns, you'd say disagree. And then there's several buttons that you can push just to reflect what you did in that evaluation. So in addition to clicking buttons, you can write in some uh, answers describing what you did. Uh, these are the same prompts from the SLI criteria worksheet. Uh, if it is in the IEP, you can copy and paste it into here, removing any student identification. 
Uh, if you uh, just remember what you did and it's not written down, you can write in a summary. If you did this evaluation a while ago and you don't remember or it's unclear, just write something to that effect, like don't remember or unclear. So in addition to language, we have articulation and phonology. Then we ask you to copy and paste some IEP goals so we can uh, see how you are approaching your goal writing. And then finally, you have the opportunity to review your responses, asking one final time to remove student information, uh, identifying information, and then you can submit and please save a copy of your submission. You'll get a PDF. We want you to save that so that we can refer back to it as we go. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for your attention and we look forward to seeing what you have to say.